Hello, I haven't recorded anything in a while, but at the same time I'm getting a lot of questions about my older tutorial, which is this one, for creating those color tails inside Microsoft Word, so I thought I will just spend a few more minutes and try to answer those questions in the form of video, so anyone else who will try to follow this tutorial will not have any problems, hopefully. So that's, that's the idea. So this is what we will be creating today, it's a very same tutorial of course, it's a very similar kind of effect, but this time I will try to talk about all the details, all the details which are needed to, f you know, finish this tutorial without any problems. So let's jump into the new document and everything is empty and I will actually start by switching the color palette. And this will be done if I jump into the design, there is this colors drop down and you can, you know, by default it's this one or maybe this one. You can change any color palette and the idea or the advantage of doing so is once you are, when you are using colors from your color palette, if you change the color palette, those colors will be changed as well, which is quite handy and I will show you in a minute. For now, let's just switch the color palette to this red violet because this is what I think was I was using in my previous tutorial. And now I can continue. So the first thing after switching the color palette is I want the page background to be a little bit different color than the white, just so I can see my white text. So I will open the page background color properties and set the color to be this light gray maybe. This is fine. And now I can start typing in text. I can just start typing in here, but uh, that's not the best way how to do it. The much better way is to draw a text box, because as I, if I draw a text box, I can move stuff around freely, I can maybe have multiple copies of the text box. I mean, there are a lot of advantages of using text box for something like, um, you know, text with some kind of effects or for some kind of headers. So I can jump into the insert, open the shapes, and there is this text box item or there is this big text box icon which I can click as well and I can just select draw text box and then I will draw my text box in a fairly big size. And I can type in something, maybe hello again, because yeah, why not, hello again. I can change the font, I believe I was using this cartoon slam so I can use it as well and I will make it quite big, maybe 80, maybe 80 is too big, maybe 50. 50 seems to be fine. Now I have my effect, but I can, uh, sorry, my text box, I can also see the background and the outline for the text box, which is not what I want. So I can jump to the format pane while the text box is still being selected. And in the shape fill, I will set the no fill and in the shape outline, I will set the no outline. So now I only see the text itself. Now let's make this text a 3D. Let's add this 3D effect. I will open the text effects and there is this 3D rotation. And as you can see, as I move over those icons, the text is changing. But I don't want this perspective of par or parallel projection. I want this oblique or however you read it. I'm not quite sure how you read this this word. But I want this this kind of effect where it just goes right to the right and to the bottom. It's like fake 3D effect. As you can see, if I click this icon or if I even move over this icon, it does nothing. So what I have to do is I have to open the text effects one more time and click this 3D rotation options, which will show me the format shape pane. I can do the same thing if I just right click over the text box and set the format shape, it will also open me the format shape. And I can switch to the effects, actually I need to switch to the text options first and then to the text effects. And you can see that uh, for the 3D rotation this is already being set, but I need to add some depth. So in the 3D format I will increase the depth to maybe 100 points. So now I have the 3D extrusion for my text. The problem is I want this text to be one color, being the white color, and the extrusion being a different color. So I will open the text properties, I mean the text color properties of font color, and I will just change this to white color. And immediately you can see the text is white, the extrusion is white as well, there is some 3D shadowing or 3D shading happening. I don't care about it right now, I will change this, but what I want to do is make a different 3D extrusion color compared to the text itself. So I can do this by opening this color dropdown menu for the depth. By default it's set to automatic, which means that it will take whatever the text uh, color is being set. But I can change this to a different color and now I can see, you can see that the text is white but the extrusion is violet. So what I can do is I can select one letter after the other and just change the extrusion color. I have to do this manually for every single letter in my, in my message, so I'm glad that I didn't, you know, choose some very long message for this one. Maybe I can I can select multiple, you know, multiple letters if I uh, hold down the control key. 
like so and that hopefully could be working as well or should be working as well but since I don't have too many letters I will just you know select those individually the only small problem is I don't see the other colors when I'm you know editing the text so I have to just think about what's the color which I haven't used yet just to make it a little bit random maybe this one is used two more times so I will just select the last and and just make this violet instead okay so we are halfway there for our final result what I want, don't want to see is this 3D, 3D shading on the extrusion and that could be done in the material and lighting settings so I believe that the material has to be set to flat which is this one and that's probably not the case I mean uh, you know there is this flat material and there is this flat uh, lightning and the problem is if I set the material to flat now it's actually not flat I have to set the material to the mat or, or maybe different options will work as well and the lightning should be set to uh, to flat now everything is flat so maybe a little bit confusing at first so I am think that this is very close to what I was uh, showing in my in my old tutorial so let's try to do something more like this where there is this uh, 3d extrusion going to the other side there is this outline and the shadow and it will be still fairly easy to do so first thing first I will change the uh, you know the direction of the extrusion to bottom left and maybe I will make the extrusion a little bit smaller maybe like only 50 points then I will copy this text one more time so I'll just hit ctrl C ctrl V or I can just you know when this is being selected I can just select uh, copy and here I can select paste so I have this one more time and I will move it to the side so I can see both of those uh, text objects text boxes and uh, I will tell you why I did this in a minute I want to add this uh, outline effect for the entire text which is this contour I can just raise this to a bigger number like 5 and you can see that the problem is that this contour is uh, done or drawn for e each part of the design which is not very nice so I've done it this way so I can now move my previous text box over the over this one so I can only see the outline being outside of the letters which is pretty handy and now I want to add the shadow so again I will copy paste this text box one more time and this time I will just change the depth to be one color which maybe maybe this like darker uh, darker gray I will change the direction of my extrusion to the bottom right and just increase the uh, size to maybe like 200 or so and you know what I can maybe even change the depth to be automatic and just change the text color so everything will be the same color that will probably work better I will position it in the way where I want it to be and I can right click and select the uh, send to back now I have three different uh, three different text objects and it may be harder to select one of those and you know move those around so what I can do is inside the home ribbon I can select uh, and selection pane and I have those three text boxes so I can just hide those and maybe work only on one of those so this will be the, the shadow this second one is the outline let me just uh, call this outline and the topmost one is the 3d extrusion and somehow it doesn't want me to enter this so like I'll just call this extruded text okay fair enough so I have this effect and I think that I'm ready to just print this so let's see what happens if I hit the print button or just preview button I'll just select the uh, uh, Ctrl P to print this and there are a few problems you can see that the shadow is somehow cropped and maybe you don't see the page background color I do see it but maybe you don't see it let me just actually uh, reset the settings for my word just so you will see what I see or I will see what you see okay so I've just uh, set my settings to default so if I again hit Ctrl P for printing you can see what you probably see so the shadow is being cropped and I don't see the page background color so let me just fix this the first thing is that the uh, that, the sh uh, that the page background is not you know uh, visible and there is actually a setting for this if I jump to options there is this display I believe it's display yeah it's a display section and there is this checkbox which has, says print background colors and images 
and uh, it's it's off by default because it thinks when I set the page background color, I will be wasting uh, you know, so much ink that I will rather just turn it off and not print this color for you. But I can just click this checkbox, and if I do so and jump back to the preview, now you can see that the color is here. You know, you may use this uh, feature or you may just turn this off and instead of using the page background color you can probably just set the page background color inside the design to be no color and maybe instead draw just like a rectangle so maybe i'll just draw a rectangle instead below this uh, text like so and just uh, send this to back and for the fill i will use this previously used color and no outline that may be working as well maybe i don't want to print you know the entire page of this gray color maybe i don't want to in uh, no waste the ink as well so that may be one way how to how to solve this. Now for the problem of the craft shadow. The problem is that it, this is for for this layer, the shadow layer, and you can somehow see. Let, so let me just uh, change the page background color to this one so we can see it better. So we can see the you know outline of the text object. You can see that the the shadow, the free extrusion goes outside of the text box, and you know Word just thinks that if it goes outside, we will not not print it. So we have to somehow fix it. We had to somehow get this 3D extruded text inside the text box, and as for you know, as for the top part, I can just uh, you know put a new line in here, and now you can see it's you know it's somehow inside from the top, but it's going still to the left too much. So I can jump to the home page or home ribbon, and in the paragraph I can just increase the left indentation to maybe like I don't know I'm using centimeters but you can use inches or whatever just move it a little bit to the right and now you can see it's inside the text box so it should probably print the only thing is I have to show the other text boxes and position this properly to match the the other two like so so it's on the right position like so so let me just open the preview one more time and this time I can see the page background, I can see the you know, shadow not being cropped, so it should print just fine, hopefully. Again, I was in the beginning talking about the colors. What I can do is, since I was using the palette colors, I can jump to the design, and from the colors drop down menu, I can select a different palette. And if I do so, or if I even scroll over a different palette, you can see that now all the colors are changing, which may be quite helpful. I can just reuse the same effect with different colors if I want to. If I want to change the text, I have to make sure that I change all three text objects because I have this text three more times or three times in my design. So I don't. It's not enough to just change this hello to hello and exclamation mark because now the exclamation mark is only for this first layer and not for the other two. So instead of doing it this way, you know, I have to just uh, type this letter for all the other. Uh, text object so I have to type in here maybe hide this one then type it in here the exclamation mark hide this one and for the last one again I have to type it in here and now I can show everything and it will work just fine uh, you know theoretically I can use the replace find and replace function which is in here if I hit replace I can type in you know hello and instead you know type in hi but if I do so, and I hit replace all, it you'll actually, it's not working, why it's not working? Hmm. <laughs> it should be working, but it's not. It's kind of strange. Anyway, if I would, if it would be working, if, if it will not be helpful that much because it will, you will lose the formatting. So basically the only way how to not lose formatting for this extruded text layer is just to, you know, replace one letter after the other. So I cannot just uh, select this text again and type in hello one more time because it will get the color from the first letter and now all the letters are the same. If I want to keep the colors, I have to actually, you know, replace one letter after the other. Let me just undo all this, and I will just type in hell h, you know, instead of this one, e, and like replacing each individual letter. This one should be o. Actually, let me just do this 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 way, like o. And hopefully, when I deselect this, you know, the colors are still there, which they are, which is great. Of course, you know, the other text, I have to do this as well. I mean, it takes a little bit of time, but 
not that much. It's not terribly time consuming. And this is our final effect. I believe one of the questions which are in the comments is, you know, you have this finalized, but you've realized that it's probably too big or too small. Is there a way how to change the font size? Of course there is. I have to just uh, select all of those text objects at the same time and maybe change the size to, I don't know, like 30 only, like so. Obviously the shadow is you no know, not positioning properly, so I have to place it to the right position and maybe I would make the shadow a little bit smaller, maybe set the depth to be only 100, like so. And again, you know, of course, like so. And that's probably it. That's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope there are no other questions related to this tutorial and hopefully see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.